guys, welcome back to my channel. It's the video we've all been waiting for. I am so excited to share with you guys my top books of 2020. It was a really good reading year for me. I ended up reading 58 books and I gave 11 of them five stars. So I'm gonna be talking basically about my five star books. Um, one of them is just kind of like an honorable mention. So I'm really gonna be talking about 10 of them. So like my top 10 books of 2020 is what I'm getting at. I read some absolutely incredible books this year. I'm so happy with the range and the quality of the books and the quantity of the books. I really, really had a great reading year. I'm also really excited to be able to talk about 10 of them because last year I only talked about five because I really didn't read that much last year, but this year, here we are. I'm sorry this video is a little bit late, I'm filming this on January 3rd. Hopefully we'll get it up on January 3rd so it's not super late. I know some people talked about their top books of 2020 like a month ago and I'm like, it wasn't even over yet. I wanted to make sure like I read everything that I was gonna read. So here we are. The 11th five star that I'm gonna talk about is The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse by Charlie Mackesy. This is just the cutest book ever. I'm not gonna talk about it for very long. I also feel like everyone knows this book so who am I to ramble on about it, but it's like this cutest little illustrated book and it talks about life. I absolutely loved it. On my Goodreads, this was like the top rated book that I had read that everyone else agreed with, so beautiful. Wanted to briefly mention this. And now we're gonna move on to the other 10. I'm not really gonna go in order. I'm gonna try and like organize them in some way, kind of like my least favorite five stars in the beginning and then we'll go from there, but just letting you know. That's kind of how I'm gonna do this because it's so hard to order them. Like, how do you know? I don't even know my favorite book of the year yet. I'm gonna have to like wait till the end of this video and figure it out. So y'all are along that journey with me. So I'm actually gonna start with my three book of the month books because they are kind of like on the lower tier, which just kind of happened that way. But I had The Starcross Sisters of Tuscany by Laurie Nelson Spielman. This one is so cute so out of my comfort zone, so unlike any other book on this list. This follows a family, an Italian family. We mainly follow a girl, Amelia, and we look back at a few hundred years ago and this family has a curse put on them that the second born sister never finds love. So present day Amelia is like 30. She's given up on love, she doesn't care. And she has a 21 year old cousin named Lucy. And one day their estranged great aunt Poppy reaches out to them and is like, hey, let's go to Italy together and let's find love. I'm gonna break this curse for y'all. So they all traipse to Italy for like 10 days and I loved it. It was like an adventure story, a love story, a family story. It was so cute. I highly recommend this book. I really wanna to go to Italy even more now. It was just fun. It's also like there's deeper things that happen, but like overall, it's just like a fun book. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, that's this one. Next, of course, The Paris Hours by Alex George. I'm gonna talk about this one briefly because I made a whole video just for this book. So I'm not gonna to go too in depth, but basically this takes place in like 1927 Paris where arts are like booming and we follow four different people that all are living very different lives. We kind of see like the back streets of Paris, which is really cool because I feel like so many books about Paris are just like focused on like really famous, like fancy people, but like these are very ordinary people. So it's just really cool to read about and you follow their very different lives and then at the very end you see all of their lives come together all their stories intertwine which is like my favorite thing in books is that called a trope i don't know but like when all these different characters meet up like it's my favorite thing it really gets me going so love the paris hours it's also super short so you could read this definitely in a day i think i did it's just so well written and so well put together i loved it loved it not enough people talk about this book check it out the last one from book of the month that I have to talk about is The Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kidd. This is incredible. So this is kind of like a historical retelling, like if Jesus had a wife. And so we mainly follow her. Her name is Anna. She is so inspiring and independent and doesn't take crap from anyone. And just like seeing her live in this time period where like women have no respect and no say in like anything and who they marry and what they do, like everything is drawn out for them. Her life is so incredible. 
And like if Jesus were to have had a wife, like amazing. She would have been it. She would have been the it girl. I can't even find words to describe this book. It's so good. Sumo Kid, amazing. Like the detail, the depth of the storytelling. Everything is just incredible about this book. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Kind of heartbreaking, but it's in every book I read heartbreaking, pretty much. I cry for every novel, so here we are. Also, God, this cover. I will say it over and over again. This year had incredible covers, so loved it. So this one is also kind of random on its own. This is the only memoir on the list. This may also be the only memoir I read the whole year, which is shocking because I love memoirs, but this is The Pale Face Lie by David Crow. I actually read this during a reading vlog, so you can watch that if you want to know more. But this falls David Crow. He writes about his life living kind of out west in the United States, part of a Navajo family, and his dad is super abusive and like a criminal and just a really not good person. And then his mother is very mentally unstable, mentally ill, and he has three siblings, and it's just them living a nomad life. He's super abused by his father, has no support from his mother. It's a really, really hard life. It very much reminded me of The Glass Castle by Janet Walls, which is one of my favorite books of all time, so of course I loved this one too. This was kind of the book that I was most hesitant on giving five stars to, probably on this list, just because like, it's really hard to read and it's not super fun to read, but I have to just like give his life. It's also hard to rate someone's life, like, you know, but anyways, I still loved it. It was really shocking and inspiring and beautiful and sad. So, Pale Face Life by David Crow. And then I read two mental health reads that I gave five stars to. The first one on the list is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. So yeah, I read this last January and it just like opened my mind to books that like center around mental health and mental illnesses because I'd never really read a book like that. I loved John Green in high school, like eight years ago, like he was everything for me. So I saw this and I was like, let's give it a shot. So this follows 16 year old Aza in high school and she has a couple friends as her little sidekicks and kind of the surface level story is them trying to find this missing billionaire so that they get a lot of reward money so that's kind of the story that we follow but really it's about aza's mental health and she is pretty ocd about like her health like hypocount hypochondriac is that what it's called but mainly she has like a lot of anxiety and this has really good like we see into her mind and like her internal monologue that was so just like refreshing to read and I wish that I had read this when I was 16 because it would have really helped me out but it was just so nice to read about someone who has like the same thoughts as you you know and you could tell that like John Green also suffers with this kind of stuff because it was so spot on and just like reading this book was really comforting to know that you're not alone and you're not crazy so highly recommend this book again the cover is incredible it's also very short you can read it in a day and it's just so nice to read it was just such a such a solid solid read so kind of along with that is eleanor oliphant it's completely fine by gail honeyman this might be in the running for my favorite book we're gonna see till the end <laughs> you're gonna figure out with me so this one follows eleanor oliphant and she lives in england and she's like middle-aged maybe like 40 she has a very like she lives her life in solitude like she has no family no friends no significant other like she just goes to like her office job nine to five goes home drinks a lot she very much has a drinking problem and is just very lonely and very depressed and very anxious and she constantly has like her mother's thoughts running in her mind like her mother is very toxic to her one day at work she does find a little friend and i forgot his name raymond he works at her office and they kind of like start this little friendship but of course she's very weary of him and it takes her like a long time to open up it doesn't have a perfect ending neither does turtles all the way down because mental health never really goes away, like mental illnesses never really go away, you never really have full control over your mental health, but this one and more deals with depression, and I just thought it was so, again, just comforting. This book is like a big hug to me, it's just, ugh. it made me cry a lot at the end, not shocking, I cry for everything, so 
I don't know if that's very telling, but I want to read this again. It's just such a beautiful book and it brings up topics that like are not talked about and I'm just really glad that like they're being more talked about now, you know? So especially in 2020, this was really nice to read about because it was like, hey, that's kind of like my life right now. Anyways, ugh, this ugh, we'll see if this is my favorite book. Who knows? Who knows? The last four books. Who would have thought? They're historical fiction. So, like, how do you choose a favorite? We'll get started. Lovely War by Julie Berry, because I also just made a video about this book. So I'm not gonna talk that much about it, but this takes place in World War I, and we follow two couples, and the four of them are from, like, all over the world, and they kind of all meet because of the war. And it's about their love stories, but it's also about war and racism and war. <laughs> and, it's narrated by the gods, mainly Aphrodite, so she's kind of telling the story of these couples to Ares, the god of war, Apollo, the god of the arts, Hades comes in there, and she's kind of like just telling these love stories to them. So that was really amazing. Gave this one, I was gonna say, gave this one five stars, you already know that. Just so well done. Like, you gotta give her props. Like, you gotta, you know, give her a round of applause. This is such a beautiful, well done book. I read some comments from my video on this book saying that, you know, the thing that bothered people was how fast the couples fell in love. And I honestly didn't even think about it before I made that video, but that is very true. So, like, if you don't like that kind of stuff, then this might not be for you because they do fall in love very quickly, which I do find not realistic at all. But that was just, like, very minor to me. Like, I didn't really mind it. You know, I kept reading it and loved it. So. Lovely War by Julie Berry. Also gotta give a shout out to Haley Bookland because she raved about this book and that's why I bought it. And she has just been like the spokesperson for this book. So anyways, loved it, loved it. The next historical fiction is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I read this about a year ago. So like I'm a little iffy on the details, but this takes place during World War II in war-torn France. We follow one character, a little blind girl living in Paris with her father, and then we follow a German soldier who is like new to war and really terrified. So we follow their stories independently for most of the book. And you're like, okay, how do they come together? And then they come together and it's beautiful. Again, my favorite thing that books do. So of course I loved it. I cried a lot. So what else can I say? <laughs> Um, yeah, my memory's a little bit foggy on this one, but it just combines all my favorite things. What do you expect? How am I not gonna love it and put it as one of my favorites, you know? So that's pretty much all I have to say about this one. <laughs> if that sounds interesting to you, pick it up. The last two books I read back to back. It was really an amazing time. I believe I read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delions. They're also very basic, so you probably know about these books and have probably read them, but Finally picked this one up this year. I think I read these in June, but this takes place on like the shores of North Carolina, kind of like the Outer Banks, and we follow our main character, Kaya Clark. And so she grows up on the banks with her family. Her dad is super alcoholic and abusive. And so one day her mother and all of her siblings leave the little shack and her dad stays around for a little bit and then leaves. So now she's left alone living in this little shack on the marsh and so she kind of gets a reputation around town that she's like the marsh girl and really weird and really secluded and just people don't really understand the situation. So she falls in love with nature like that's her thing, you know. So we follow her kind of growing up and then one day in town the big like ex like football star from high school is murdered and everyone thinks that it's her so it's like a murder mystery like thriller like the courtroom scenes the trial scenes i was not okay my heart was palpating um but it's also beautiful it's also like a growing up story a finding yourself story a romance there's a little bit of romance in there nature story loved all the nature aspects like you can picture this scenery so clearly it's beautiful and yeah everyone knows this book everyone's read it everyone loves it so it's no no surprise that i did too last book the nightingale by Kristen hannah <sighs> is this my favorite book of the year i don't know i don't know hold on so historical fiction we follow two sisters living in war-torn france in world war ii and the older sister gets married and then her husband goes off to war and so she's left alone in the house with her daughter and her sister and 
Her younger sister runs off. And so they're both kind of part of the resistance. The older sister staying at home has to let like German soldiers into her house and live there, which is like horrendous. So she kind of like is dealing with all that. And then the younger sister, Isabel, I believe, the younger sister is actually like participating in the resistance and trying to fight back the Germans. And so they're both kind of taking the war into their own hands. <sighs> It is so incredible. I am exhausted talking about <laughs> these books that I love. I read this in one day. I picked it up at like 10 a.m. one morning and then I finished it at 6 p.m., which I've never done that before. It's about 550 pages. So I have also never sobbed so much during a book. I'm genuinely being honest. I have never sobbed so much during a book. It is heartbreaking. Like I cried multiple times at multiple points in the book, which usually doesn't happen for me. Usually I just like cry at the end of books, but this was so heartbreaking. I can't believe the storytelling abilities. This is historical fiction at its best, literature at its best. And like, I know this is a really popular book, so why am I rambling to you about books that you already know about? But yeah, <sighs> which book is my favorite of the year? That's the true question. I'm really torn between these two, I really, like, how do you choose? They're so different, you know? Y'all, I'm having an internal struggle. I probably ought to say The Nightingale by Kristen Hannah is my favorite book of the year. But this one's so good, ow. <laughs> but this one's so good too. I don't know, probably The Nightingale was my favorite book of the year. Anyways, this was like a super long video, I'm really sorry. I could ramble forever about all the books that I love. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know, favorite book of the year, maybe top three. I could probably do top three. Probably really caught at seeing The Nightingale and Eleanor Oliphant, but like choosing one is so hard. Okay, anyways, I'm done. I hope you guys enjoyed and I just like love filming these videos about books that I love and I can't wait to see what I read this year. The books that I love this year, it's all very exciting. But anyways, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.